today with me we've got Ant from Superbase, who is going to take us through showing about all the power powers of the cool things that Superbase can do. And um, uh, I'll try and fill in the bits that relate to Bravo, because I think they're a really interesting combination of using Superbase uh, alongside Bravo for the right combinations. But first of all, Ant, do you just want to do a quick intro to yourself as one of the founders of Superbase and talk a little bit about you know, what Superbase is and what you're trying to do with it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So my name is Ant. I'm from Liverpool in the UK, originally, usually found in, in Singapore these days. Um, and two years ago, I, uh, along with Paul, co-founded Superbase. And Superbase is the open source Firebase alternative. So anyone who's used Firebase um, before, you'll find it quite familiar. Um, it's data storage. We have an auth layer. Um, you can store files and folders in it as well, um, but it's all open source. Um, so the main differences are obviously there's no vendor lock-in because you can take it and self-host it if you want and take take your data out. Um, and that it's actually uh, SQL-based, so it's a relational database instead of Firebase, which is um, like a document-based storage system. Um, with the idea that it's ideally more scalable. So when you get like really a lot of users and you, you're scaling up as a business and um, you don't face some of the, the scaling issues that you might do with a document-based storage, um, you can just keep keep scaling to, to millions and billions of users, um, ideally. And, and we can definitely try and help you with that. That's what, I mean, actually, yeah, I mean, I think one of the things I've seen is a lot of our users struggle a bit with uh, Firestore and that document store. It's it's great for pulling documents back, but if you need to do any kind of simple operations and sorting or pulling out particular columns, it gets, it's, you end up having to build quite a lot, a lot of logic to do that. Whereas with SQL, it kind of comes out of the box. So it's uh, there are some big advantages to having it that way. And I guess because it uses, it uses Postgres under the hood, right, which is a pretty well-known, robust, um, SQL database. There's a lot of people um, know about it and can use it. And I think one of the things I like about Superbase is the ability to kind of get to that lower level if you need to. You know, often with no code tools, everything's hidden and you can't really get to, if you need to kind of improve the performance with putting index on or making a small adjustment, it's really hard to make those tweaks. Whereas with Superbase, if you need to get to that low level, you, you pretty much can, which I think is a super, for the for certain, the people that need it, it's a really helpful thing to have access to, for sure. Yeah, definitely. That, that was the whole idea, was to make it as easy as possible, as easy as Firestore to get started. Um, but then, as you say, as you grow, you need to tweak performance, you need to um, run more complex queries, and you can, you can do that. And obviously, Postgres comes with you know, a long history, a huge community, lots of learning resources, um, which just, you know, uh, is 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 an incredible tool to, to build on. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, so maybe, perhaps do you mind just doing a quick tour of Superbase, um, sort of showing people what, what it looks like and that sort of the, the sort of main features of it? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I think you have that now. Um, so just like Firebase, you you know come into the dashboard, you create a profile, um, and then you can just start creating uh, your project. So if I go to create a new project here, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, oh, I've run out of free projects because I've got so many <laughs> test projects, but luckily <laughs> I made one earlier. Um, so I'll go over to my Brave demo, which I prepared earlier. Um, and the core of Superbase is, is the database itself. Um, and what we did um, is we took a lot of inspiration from Airtable actually um, to try and make like a spreadsheet uh, view for people who are just getting started. Um, obviously you can, if you're more advanced and you know how to write SQL queries, uh, we have a full SQL editor where you can come in and do that. Um, but actually the easiest way to get started um, from a no-code perspective as well is is with the um, like this Airtable like interface. Um, so if I just go ahead and create, let's imagine we're creating um, a to-do list app. Um, I can come in and create a table called lists. Um, and then I just start adding my columns. So I'll just give my list a name. Um, choose the type, which will be text. 
um, and hit save is now I just have a simple table um, that I can start adding adding rows to. Um, so let's say I want to make a, a shopping list here um, and maybe separately a to-do list. Um, I have a couple of lists. And then I mentioned earlier that because Postgres is a relational database, um, you know, you build up your schema and you link your tables together. So I would have one table called lists and then a separate table, which is tasks. And ideally I would, I would link them together. And again, take an inspiration from air table. We've tried to, uh, to, to do that. So let's make another table called tasks here. Um, and you want your task to just have some text. Um, and I'll create that. And then the process of linking these two tables together is to just add a new column and choose uh, add foreign key relation. Um, so I want to link to list. So I'll do the list ID, uh, choose foreign key relation, find uh, my lists table in the list here and connect it via the ID. Um, and now if I'm lucky, I can create, oops, create a new row in my task table. I'll say, I'll, I want to add it to the shopping list. Um, let's just check that it's the shopping list. Um, and I want to, you know, buy bread <laughs> um, and save that. Um, and just to, to visualize this, I think this is actually a cool part of open source as well is um, one of our community members built this awesome schema, what they call a schema visualizer. So when you, you create your tables, it's typically called a, a schema, you're building your database schema. Um, and someone built this, this awesome schema visualizer. So you basically just put in your Superbase URL and your API key. Um, and then it will display your tables and like how they're connected together. So you can get a good uh, overview of, of this. And, and this tool itself built by a community member is also completely open source. So you can go and read the code, make contributions. Um, and that's really at the core of everything we, we do is even with Superbase, the Superbase dashboard, if there's something you think we should add, um, you can also just come in and, and make the contribution yourself um, if, if you know if you know react and next.js and these things um, then once I've got my you know the the basis for my database and um, we also do user management as well um, and that's also quite simple using the dashboard and um, let's say I want to invite a new user to my app and um, I can I can do it programmatically using the apis but I can just as easily come in here um, invite myself as a test user. Um, and then I'll show up in this, in this table. And um, it also sent me a verification email uh, to my email address. So I could just go in and, and click, you know, oh yeah, I confirm this is me. And then you know that it's a verified email address. And you can also, instead of email, connect people via their phone numbers and send SMS verifications as well. Um, so again, if you've used Firebase and Firestore, very similar to the Firebase auth service that they provide, um, just trying to replicate a lot of the, the same tooling. Um, just a couple more things that I'll show. Um, we have storage. So if you want to store files, uh, images, videos that you want to use in your app, and we also provide that service as well. Um, and the way you do that is you create a new bucket. Uh, let's say uh, avatars. Um, I can make it public or private. In this case, I want it to be public because I want everyone to see everyone else's avatars. Um, and then again, I can either programmatically um, upload some files or I can just drag um, some of my goat friends here 
um, into the viewer. And hopefully we get um, a nice goat on a skateboard, which I generated on, on Dali a couple of days ago. <laughs> nice. Um, and then it's, it's, you know, you can either use these images inside your app then. So I'll click copy the URL um, but you'll just see it's now just effectively like an image hosting service. So if I paste that in the browser and um, you'll see that, you know, you can just start browsing your files like that. So a lot of different apps. Um, I think someone built a, a TikTok open source clone um, on Superbase, which was really cool. Um, and, you know, basically just there's a, a lot of different possibilities and, and we're all, always trying to add add new functionality. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a basic demo. If you, it's totally free to get started. And so if you just come to superbase.com and sign up and um, you get two free projects, which you can, you know, use as much as you want. And, uh, and uh, as we discussed, it's, it's also just Postgres. So if you know Postgres, the database, and you get your own dedicated Postgres instance, um, which can actually scale quite a lot, even just on the free tier. Um, so yeah, that's the, the, the basic intro. That's great. I mean, maybe what I could do now is just show people how to connect it to Bravo, because I think that's obviously often the things that people kind of, um, you know, might want, may not be, uh, I don't, we don't think we've got great, we need to improve our documentation on how to do that. So let me just share my screen uh, for, let me see if I can find it. Mm -hmm. Too many windows, I would say. Oh, hold on, I don't know why. One second. Let me try it now. Da, da, da. Okay, I think this is it. So can you see my super base screen? So um, so what I've got here is this is, this is actually an Airtable I've imported into Superbase. I think it, it, your import's pretty good, actually. Um, and it's just some data on uh, locations in New York is, is the data set here. But to connect it to Bravo, I mean, what Bravo does, I mean, obviously the way that Bravo works is really focused on APIs. And the great thing about uh, what Superbase does is as well as, you've got, as libraries to connect to different things, but you can actually connect directly to um, the APIs, I mean, it basically puts an API wrapper around your data. So everything is available. And I think you've got some auto-generated auto documentation. So if I go to my fun table, um, you can actually, it's a way of looking in JavaScript, but what's relevant for us is, is the bash version. So you can see the URLs. So by going down to, and I, let's just pick out one. So the one for all rows. So this URL here, is the URL. And so basically it's selecting all the data from the fun table. And obviously you need your keys to make that work. And then if you pull that in, that will then pull in all the data from your um, Superbase table, that particular table, so you can have it available in Bravo. And then this, this also lists all the other um, sort of functions such as um, looking for columns specifically, or if I go a bit further down, updating, inserting rows. So you've got all the actual APIs you need to be able to actually do those particular actions. So if I jump now just to Bravo, so you can see that uh, I've got actually it's something I prepared earlier. So this is the this is the this is the API here, um, and then I put the keys in here, and so by sending that, then it, all the, the, each of the rows of data comes in to Bravo that we can then bind to um, the different uh, things. And actually what I can just do, just to quickly show that working, I've just got a simple Figma file, which I'll just drop into Bravo real quick. So we can just see that happening. So I don't know, I don't know, and if you try to pull in a Figma file to play around with this, yeah, I did. Um, I stole one of your community um, pre-built Figma files. <laughs> okay, oh, that's great. So, so there we go. So I've got one of the file here, and then I can just go to the, the Superbase test. There's my list connected to data. So that will pull in the list to this card, and then Bravo will automatically, as you know, will dynamically create all the cards based on the API that comes in, and then we can just connect 
the data to there's the, the images to photos, name to name, and I'll just do, I think I called price neighborhood. And so that connects it. And then, uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty much as easy to use as a lot of the other tools that we, um, that we use. I think one thing I would say Anne, is that probably the, I think the, the bash or the, like the pure API documentation doesn't get as much love as the JavaScript stuff, I guess, because not many people use it maybe. Um, but there's a lot of, a lot of the functionality isn't actually documented for for the non JavaScript things uh, like, um, yeah. like the ordering and a lot of the further extensions aren't, you kind of have to figure it out. I mean, it's, it, you can get to it, but it's not as straightforward as the, um, uh, you know, the JavaScript stuff. As the JavaScript one, yeah. Yeah, no, that's definitely something we'll work on. Um, yeah, so I think that is a, a good kind of overview of, of Superbase and how it works with Bravo. Um, do we need, do we want any kind of, any questions from anybody on how that works? Um, I, I, th I think it's it, it's crazy when you start plugging these tools together because I, I just remember like, you know, five, seven years ago trying to build an app from scratch and it just taken so long to even get like anything working to just get something up and running. And the fact that now you can go from idea to seeing it basically in production and in a few clicks yeah. is, is mind-blowing, whole... honestly. The, the whole I mean, the whole industry is just accelerating. There's more and more tools doing more and more crazy things. Um, but it's uh, but I think that's part of the challenge is trying to work out what's the right tool for the job. As always with this development, it's like you've got to figure <laughs> out how how you, which is the right combination to do the thing that you need. And one of the things I particularly like about Superbase actually, which again is is very relevant for our users. We've got a lot of people use Airtable, and obviously with Airtable you get to this limitation of the five requests a second, and then you're, you're basically stuck. And you you know you have a big issue. We actually have one of our users. They used um, Sequin IO to connect it to Superbase, and that basically gave them much better performance um, while still having all the flexibility of Airtable. Because for the people that don't know, Sequin allows you to basically synchronize your Airtable to a, a Postgres database. And so by having it in Superbase, they basically get all their same API functionality of Airtable. Um, but with much better performance. So you're able to not have to change your workflow with Airtable and still get all the ability to update and use it connected to an app uh, with, a, with what the flexibility that, that Superbase gives you, which is, I think, is a really nice, if you need that performance boost without having to do a ton of work, it's a really nice way of kind of combining the things together. Yeah. I, I think one of the things that was, you know, we started the business in Singapore, actually, um, two years ago. And I think one of the advantages of that is you think like about global performance from day one, um, rather mm. than if you know you you start in San Francisco and and all your users are in San Francisco and then you you might not really think to branch out. But I think from day one we were really focused on you know we had users coming in from New York who were saying oh why is the latency so much? So it made us it really forced us to to improve our our global performance right from the start. Yeah, I actually did. I don't know if you saw it. I did a bit of a performance benchmark for the sort of things our users do with a bunch of backend tools. And Superbase was one of the best performing ones, I guess, because that shows that you've focused on trying to get this stuff right, which is good to see. Yeah. Um, we've, got, we've got a couple of questions um, from Anse. Uh, how can you build fun